A brand new episode of the Happy Productive Podcast is about to begin. It's time to be inspired by simple and actionable solutions for your business. If you're an established business owner or just laying down the first brick of your future empire, the mantra is the same. We will flip any failure into a positive and use it to our advantage. This show is all about turning cold into diamonds. With the right plan and mindset, anything is possible. And your host, Jennifer Dawn, business coach and founder of The Best Planner Ever, will help you to achieve your ambitious goals. Success is closer than you think. Now, here's Jennifer Dawn. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to Happy Productive. I am super excited for our guest today because he's going to be talking about one of my favorite topics in business, SEO. And I can't wait to like pick his brain and see what he has to say. And so without further ado, I'm actually going to let Farzad Rashidi introduce himself. So would you mind just telling our audience really quickly just a little bit about you? Sure thing. Well, thank you so much, Jennifer, for having me on the show. My name is Farzad. I know it's kind of hard for some people to pronounce. It's uh, I always say it's like Farquad and Shrek, but without the Q. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. uh, like, absolutely. I'm the lead innovator at Respana, and we are an all-in-one link building outreach software helping online businesses with their Google search rankings. That's so awesome. And you know, most of our audience is business owners and SEO is one of those things that comes up all the time. It's come up for me in my business. And in fact, I've spent thousands of dollars, right? And you get all kinds of advice from different people on what do you really need as far as SEO is considered. And at least for me as a business owner, I've seen prices, you know, across the board. I've had companies reach out and say, hey, we'll do your SEO for, you know, two or $300 a month. And hey, we'll do your SEO for five or ten thousand dollars a month. And so, mm-hmm. I'd love to pick your brain on some of this stuff. But let's just kind of start yeah. at the very, very beginning with SEO. And can we just talk in general terms about like what kinds of businesses need to be paying attention to SEO? Absolutely. So, you know, to answer that question, Jennifer, I'd like to give you a little bit of a background behind sort of how. It, it all came to be and sort of where we stand now. I started my career in marketing back in the day at a company called Visme. Have you heard of Visme before? I haven't. Never heard of Visme? Okay, <laughs> no hard feelings. Have you have you heard of tools maybe like Canva or Prezi yes. or more? Well, yes, no. okay, we use perfect. Canva, yes. Oh, okay. Well, then you're definitely going to have to try Visme. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just kidding. But uh, Visme, we're, we're more on the B2B side. Canva is a more well-known B2C uh, product. When I joined uh, the Visme team back in, uh, gosh, how many years ago, however many years ago, uh, they were a tiny little startup, completely bootstrapped, and we had a product, but nobody really knew about it. It was, it, we, we were basically, we had to raise hundreds of millions of dollars, like some of our competitors were, we were a tiny little business. And so we had to start basically figuring out some acquisition channels that weren't going to cost us an arm and leg, mm-hmm. and also something that would that we could easily replicate and scale over time. Mm-hmm. So normally there's three different channels, three main channels a lot of businesses focus on. One is cold outreach. So if you have a very expensive product and this is something that maybe your audience doesn't necessarily know they have a problem. A lot of coaching businesses are uh, someone like that. Or for example, if you own a medical device company and you sell very expensive equipment, the sales process for those are completely different from the type of product that we sell. Uh, for mm-hmm. instance. So, but those type of businesses normally makes more sense to hire salespeople and go door to door, start selling, mm-hmm. <laughs> right? Yeah. Any money you spend on other channels is going to be a waste if you already have a proven channel that's already working. Now, on the other side of coin, if you own it, for example, an e-commerce store and you sell jackets and hats, stuff that people aren't normally, you know, that's not a whole lot of differentiating factor except for the design, et cetera. Those probably, since they're B2C products, maybe social ads would work best, you know, so have an Instagram account and run some ads and, and make viral TikTok videos, right? Yeah. yeah so th- those may be a better investment in terms of time and resources. The type of product that we had at Bizme is quite interesting because we were at a price point that is quite affordable. And I think back in the day, we were like $14 a month or something. So it's a very affordable product. To a point that it just doesn't make sense for you to go hire salespeople to go door to door and sale, right. right? And at the same time, we didn't want to pour all of our cash into paid advertising because they use a bidding system and it just gets more ex- expensive by the day. And it's not mm-hmm. a very scalable channel. So mm-hmm. meaning if you double your budget, doesn't mean you're going to get double right. the conversions. 
the ROI has sort of a marginal, diminishing marginal effect in terms of mm-hmm. um, a cost per acquisition. So what we had to sit down and try to figure out was to basically look back at our customer journey. We're like, okay, let me actually, let's go through this exercise with you. I think let's just go through an example. So let's say, so Vizme, uh, for folks who don't know what it is, is that online visual content creation platforms, a lot of us mm-hmm. use it to create presentations, infographics, et cetera. So let's say, Jennifer, you are writing a blog post and you would like to create an infographic for your blog post, right? And let's say you aren't already a customer of Campbell. You're actually a person who is looking for a new solution. Mm-hmm. What's the first step you do in terms of finding a new solution? What's the absolute yeah. first thing you do when it comes to finding a new software? When, or what everybody product? does. We Google it. That's what exactly. we do, right? That's yes. Exactly, right? Yep. So we already knew that from day one, uh, that our customers are actively Googling or searching for a solution like ours. Yep. So to go back to your point in terms of figuring out whether SEO is the right channel for you, i like to revert that question back to you and, and, and for you to think back and ask your customers, hey, how did you find us? And, and understand, are you running a business that people are actively searching for? And if, it, if they're actively looking for basically a product or a service through Google, then that's an indication that you probably should show up where <laughs> your customers are looking for you. So Vizme, we, we basically, what happened was, as you mentioned, we work with quite a few agencies and there's a lot, a lot of buzzwords and a lot of services. Some are more trustworthy than another. But what happened was we decided to, we were like, okay, well, this is our entire marketing effort. We're going to focus on one channel and one channel only. And that's going to be our SEO and content. So we started writing blog articles. We started putting out landing pages. And guess what happened? Well, I mean, if you were writing blog articles and you were using the right keywords, my guess Uh is that organically people started to find you on Google and find the product. Exactly. That's what we thought would happen. Uh What actually happened was that it was completely crickets. Uh (laughs) (laughs) We had like two visitors to our website. One of them was my mom. And my Uh mom is always my biggest fan. So she always checks that stuff I do. (laughs) And and so we got one other fan somewhere on the web, whoever you are. Thank you. Um, So we we had zero traffic. And so Mm -hmm. we're like, okay, well, this is kind of disappointing because... You know, we spent all this yeah. time and resources as a small team. Right. And this is this. a strategy that I have had other people say to me, you need to be blogging, 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 you know, one long form blog post every week, which is not something I can keep up with as a business mm-hmm. owner. But I'm sure there's people listening that that has been a strategy that they've heard is just, you know, do your blogs, do your keywords, and that's going to drive all this organic traffic to the site. But the truth is that's not necessarily the case. And it sounds like that's what happened to you guys too. Exactly. And, mm-hmm. and you know, that is something that I knew, you know, was we were doing something wrong because we were like, okay, well, we can be zero. That, right. So let's try to take a step back, go back to the drawing board and figure out what we were doing wrong. So we started looking at the keywords that we were trying to target, one of which was presentation software, because mm-hmm. obviously nothing special about it. We, we were a presentation software. So we we're like, okay, that's one of the main keywords we wanted to target. So one day I just looked it up on Google, just opened a window and I looked it up. And guess how many search results pop up? You see how in Google says how many web yep. pages match your query? How many search results pop up do you think for a presentation software? Just throw a number out there, any number. It's in the millions. <laughs> in the millions. Draw up a number. Let's get it a little. I more. don't know, 10 how million. How many millions? 10, 10 million. million. Okay, I just Googled it as you were speaking. There's 3.9 billion search results <laughs> with a B. With a B. All right. Yeah. With a B. Now, yeah. we're like, okay, hey, we're writing content pieces that are in the top 1%, right? Yep. Can't get any better than that. We're writing content pieces that are just so good that we're in the 99th percentile. Okay. Mm-hmm. Based on that, you're still in the hundreds of millions. Yeah even if you're in the top 1%. So how do you go from the 100 millionth to right now we're ranked number one? If you go ahead and Google it, mm-hmm. right now we're, we're occupying the top two spots. One is one of our blog posts, it's ranking, best presentation software, and also there's our landing business ranking there. All right, I'm Hopefully by the time, right now. Perfect, you gotta fact check me, uh, Jennifer. I'm Googling <laughs> it right now, exactly. I'm nervous now, okay. Hopefully there we're you still are, there you're, you're number one. There's paid traffic ads, which are showing up at the very top. 
but you are number one organically biz me right there 15 right. best presentation softwares for 2022 let's go baby that's yeah, right very so, nice so what you're seeing now is is just the top of the iceberg okay so yeah. this was an eight-year effort so let me break it down. So right now, Vizme's website is getting over two and a half million organic traffic. Mm. That's resulting in about 20 to 25,000 new users to our platform every single day without us spending a penny in paid ads mm -hmm. or cold average. Mm -hmm. Now, guess how much that traffic is worth? That traffic if we were is to worth drive, a lot. <laughs> if you were to bring, so there's a website called Ahrefs that gives you, okay, if you were to bring in the same level of traffic, Mm -hmm. that you are getting now organically for these keywords mm -hmm. you were to pay google to rank for these certain keywords how much would you think it would cost us to bring the same level of traffic uh, i'm really not sure i i have read that when you show up organically the people who click on you organically you have a 30 i think it's 30 percent higher conversion rate than people right. who click on an ad so that traffic is already going to be worth more I would think in conversions just because it's that organic traffic. Right. Well, even if you keep the conversions the same, mm -hmm. if we were to bring in just enough, the same foot traffic to our website will cost us $1.4 million every single month. Wow. That you're generating that. Level. If you had to buy that traffic. You have to buy that traffic. Yeah. Exactly. $1.4 million a month. And so any effort that we've done compared to that. So, so there is a disconnect here, right? So yeah. you may be asking Farzad, well, how did you go from two organic visitors? Yeah, two. <laughs> one or two, yeah. to now two and a half million, okay? So there is no rocket science. It's actually a very simple process that people can easily replicate. I'm, I'm just stunned by how much misinformation is out there about SEO Yeah. Uh, because the, the principles are quite simple. Mm -hmm. So I've actually, uh, for folks who are interested, and if you know, I know a lot of people uh, don't want to just listen to this in audio format. I do have a step by step free ebook that I wrote uh, back in the day at Bizme that I actually outline step by step. And there's no plugs of any of our tools or anything, there's no payment. You can just go and download it. If you just Google Bizme marketing strategy, mm -hmm. uh, one of the first search results that pop up should be uh, that ebook. You guys can download it and just step by step follow that process. You don't need an agency, you don't need any fancy contractors. You can replicate this yourself. All Very right. nice. And I'm going to give you a little overview here. Mm -hmm. But basically, I feel like that was a very long answer to your question, Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs> but but let me pause here really quick, just so I can give you a, a, a chance to kind of direct direct a conversation. To yeah, everyone. no, this is absolutely fascinating. You've got me. You've done a great job. You've hooked me because, of course, as a business owner, I want to hear, like, what is that strategy? Because for those of you who are listening, I think you've gotten it that, like, if you have a business... And there are people who are on Google, everybody's on Google looking for what they need. This is one of the things we coach our clients on. It's like, look, if you have a business that people are going to get on Google and look for you, you need to be looking at your SEO or, or doing paid traffic or doing something to get that traffic to your website. So the answer is you probably need this if you're listening to this show and you're a business owner. But the second thing is, you're right, there's so much misinformation out there. I know in growing my businesses, I've gone in different directions with SEO strategies just because, you know, you're trying to do the right thing, but there's a lot of misinformation out there. So I'd love to hear, like, give us the overview. Like, what is this marketing strategy? Sure thing. So here, here's the secret sauce. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so let me walk you through it. I always say building a website is it's a lot like building a house. Right. Mm -hmm. There is a foundation that you sort of start digging deep first. You don't start building a house from on top first. Right. You start digging deep, build a foundation. Once it's secure, then start building a top. You build a facade on top. Okay. Now, SEO in general, I normally like to break it down into two parts mm -hmm. the on page side and the off page side. The on page side is what's on your website. So it's completely under control is the, the blog content they write, is the sales pages that you, that you create, is the, is the site structure, basically. Mm -hmm. But that's where a lot of people end their efforts. Mm -hmm. And that's the big mistake that we made from day one. And Visme was just all of our efforts were just focused on building the right site, not knowing that that's step one, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? So the biggest, I would say most important part when it comes to SEO, and that was sort of the aha moment for us at the time, is the off-page side. 
which is all purely based on content promotion. Mm -hmm. So let me explain this quickly. So let's go back to our example about presentation software. All right. So let's say you have a web page that is targeting the keyword, whatever that is that your business does. Like for example, for Respana, our target keyword is link building software, which I'm going to mm -hmm. explain what that means. So if you go Google link building software now, we should be on the top three. Mm -hmm. So let me tell, and we're beating some of the legacy sites in our space that are like been in the industry for over 20 years. So let me tell you how we did that. So one of the biggest, most important factors with Google, I always say Google works kind of like a mean girls popularity contest, right? <laughs> because you can't just look at the quality of content because first of all, that's a very subjective term. Plus there's 3.9 billion search results. So quality at some point, is gonna be pretty good when you get to the first million, the top million. Yeah. Now, how do you go about ranking these 1 million web pages? Because 99 point whatever percentage of clicks go through the same page, the first page one, right? Yeah. They always say in the SEO space, they're like, if you wanna hide a dead body, page two of Google is normally a good place. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so how do we go get into top 10? Mm -hmm. So the way Google, beat all the other search engines just back in the 90s, late 90s, was the algorithm called page rank, which mm -hmm. actually I thought it was because it ranks pages, but it's not that. It's because Larry Page, their founder, named it after himself. Uh, mm. Very, very large ego, my man. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but basically the way it works is the same principles as scientific research papers, how they value those based on the amount of citations they get by other scientists. They're mm -hmm. like, hey, what if we apply the same logic here? So if other relevant websites in your space are talking about you or talking about that web page and they, they include these little hyperlinks to that page, because that's how Google crawls web pages. Yeah. I want to keep it very simple. That in eyes of Google is a vote of popularity. It means that, okay, if other people are talking about these guys, they must be an authoritative source. And that's a much better factor than just looking at other page met on page metrics like mm -hmm keyword density because you can just as a marketer you can just stuff keywords yeah, all over your stuff page keywords but, everywhere yes exactly. i remember and, those days <laughs> yes and it used to work like I mean, back in yahoo days or aol days right but the way google kept their quality of searches as high was that they're like okay now the search ranks is not solely dependent on the content that you put on your page it's also based on what other people are thinking about you and talking about you mm -hmm. that becomes very difficult doesn't it yeah so when we did that, what, what, what we did at VizMe was we were like, okay, we know this. Let's allocate our resources accordingly. So up to this day at VizMe, we spent, and, and Responda, both companies, we spend 20% of our marketing resources on content creation. The other 80% goes into promotion and link building. Mm, link building. 80%. Wow. That is the exact opposite ratio than most companies, I would say 99%. That's what's been pushing us over the top just because most people either don't have the know-how or the manpower to do yeah. it. Yeah. And the way I would respond to those folks who are like, hey, I don't have the time to do it or I don't have the manpower. Mm -hmm. You know what I would respond to them, Jennifer? Mm -hmm. I tell them, stop producing so much damn content. Right. You don't have the right. time. Just produce one really good blog post once a month. I think we can all agree we can do that. Yeah. Spend the rest of the month prom on promotional link building. Promotional link building. This is a great topic. And so for those of you who don't know, link building, and I'm just going to, and you're going to correct me if I'm wrong, but basically it's other websites who have the highest relevancy score possible who are talking about your stuff and who are referring back to your website. So they've done a blog post or whatever content they've put out there and it's referring back to your website. And the more exactly. of these links, right? That's why I call them backlinks. The more of these links that are coming back to your site, that's basically telling Google you're an authority and to send more or tra organic traffic to your website. Is that right? You, you nailed it. Absolutely. That is okay. it. 100%. Now, it's easier said than done because... Yeah. <laughs> You know, definitely what, exactly that's when nobody wants to do it <laughs> because right. like when it's under your control you're like okay people like to remain under control like they want to you want to like okay I, I can produce content that's that's not a problem i just open up a google doc start typing yep boom i have content mm -hmm. or i want to create a social post here i can go on my computer and do it but 
how do you get other people to come and do something for you? Yeah. Yeah. This is a great, great question. And, you know, I get emails all the time from people saying, Hey, we want to put this, whatever on your website. And that's nice for them, but I don't see how it helps me at all. And I usually, I actually had to ask my SEO guy. I'm like, okay, why do I keep getting all of these? And he's like, ignore them because it helps them. It doesn't help us. So Mm -hmm. what is a good approach for a business owner can either do it yourself or hire somebody to do it but like what would you suggest like how do we how do we go about getting more more quality backlinks to our site that's a great question and you know jennifer that is something that's also been there's been a lot of malpractice in seo space just because people are just starting to figure out so content marketing and ad itself is pretty fairly new because People back in the day, Darren Moss, uh, there was an SEO company. I'm not sure you know, you've heard of Ryan Fishkin, who, who mm-hmm. had Whiteboard Fridays, and he taught the world how to track customers through Google by content marketing. Mm-hmm. And that was in the 2000s. So it's, it's a pretty new concept. So every, then, you know, over time, people started producing content, and you really didn't need any sort of average or links to start getting ranks for your content because there wasn't that much content pieces out in the world. Uh, mm-hmm. that, on the internet. So if you had spent some time to write some pieces of content, good for you. There's no no other competition. You're up in the search results. But what has happened is that recently, now more and more companies are investing in content. And the more competitive it gets, now it becomes more difficult to get ranking. So then the more important your outreach and link building efforts are going to be. Mm-hmm. Now, since it's somewhat of a new concept, a lot of companies don't know really what they're doing. So, hence why they think the answer is, okay, let's go spam everyone. Because that's all marketers can think of when, it, when it's a new concept. You're like, let's just email a million people and see what right. happens. And most of the time, 99.9% of the time, the answer to that is nothing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Nothing's going to yeah. happen. So, when I look at link building, it's actually building partnerships and doing collaborations with relevant authoritative websites in your space. Mm-hmm. And there is a variety of different strategies you can do this. Okay. For folks who would like to learn more, I do we do have a free uh, outreach strategy guide on, on Respana's blog. You guys can navigate to respana.com, the bottom of the way. I'm not trying to get you to drop mm-hmm. your email or anything. It's it's free out in the world, I'll open. You can just l- read it. You don't need okay. to put in any sort of uh, contact info. But uh, the, we, we have step-by-step instructions to different strategies for link building. Mm-hmm. Do you want me to walk you through one? Yeah, give us one. Okay, I'm doing one right now. Being a guest <laughs> on a podcast, yeah. Being a guest on a podcast. Right. You want to know how we're doing this right now? Let me explain. Yeah. So, you received an email or one of your team members yep. from Respana, which I'm not sure where you knew this, from Dylan, which is our, who's our, one of our marketing team members. Yep. So what he did, he went through Respana. He found, again, just to kind of give you some background about this, strategies is going on podcasts as a guest, aside from the fact that obviously you built really great relationships. Now, Jennifer, I know you. We're buddies now. And we're mm-hmm. connected with each other, which is great. Aside from that, it's also, you know, for your exposure, for your business, it's a brand awareness play where, you know, there's, I always say there's seven touch points before someone makes a purchase. This is one of the touch points, right? Now, if you have heard of me or Respana, now when you go on Google search results, you Google something, you see the name Respana, you trust it more. You go click on it, you read about it, right? So it's not just always just for pushing sales. It's, it's, it's it's, as I said, it's putting these seeds in the ground. Yep. And also at the same time, Jennifer, you're likely your team is going to repurpose this content into a text form content. And you probably publish this on your blog. And guess what? Right. You're going to have to link to Respana from. Yeah, absolutely. Because we're going to put the links in the show notes. It's going to go on the blog post that goes on our website. And that's going to send, that's going to basically create a link back to there your you site. Go. Right. And now we're link building. I just, I just built the link from your website without you even knowing. Very nice. Very nice. And, you know, for those of you listening, I have to share something. So when you guys reached out to me, so I get a lot of people who reach out to me mm -hmm. and we have a huge waiting list to be on this show because Mm -hmm. I'm one person. I can only record so many episodes (laughs) so fast. But when you guys did the outreach, one of the things you did and you guys listen, if you are pitching yourself to be on a podcast episode, 
one of the things that you did is you mentioned a past episode where we spoke with another guest about SEO, but then you gave me questions and you said, we would love to answer these questions. So you made it super easy for me to have you as a guest on the show. You got my curiosity going because I was obviously as a business owner, I'm interested in this topic. I've already had a guest on the show who spoke about it. But then you made it so easy on me of the questions that I would ask you. And so Mm -hmm. I just want to share that with people. If you're pitching yourself to be on a podcast, the easier that you can make it for the host of the show, (laughs) the better, because literally we have a wait list that goes probably past the end of the year now. I don't even know how long it is. It's long, but we did. We were like, this is a great topic and I wanted to talk to you about it. And so it got you on the show. So I just wanted to kind of share that too, a little bit of the backstory of, because I'm sure you guys get no's too, but that Absolutely. was how you got my attention and we got you booked on the show ahead of some of the folks that are on our waiting list. Sorry if you're listening, Absolutely. but yeah. <laughs> well, it's an honor to be here, Jennifer, and Thank I'm very you. much, it's it's a real pleasure to meet you. Hopefully this doesn't feel like as if this is was just another t- average tactic for us. So let me actually no, no. explain what we did in our research process to find you, because obviously also my time is limited. So I'd like to prioritize podcasts that we think would be a good fit. And mm-hmm. so I want your podcast made one of the lists that we were like, okay, this is a very popular podcast. They have a lot of good guests. There's a lot of good educational material on there. So mm-hmm. let's see if there's a way we could work together. So what Dylan does is that he fires up Responder. Responder helps you find, again, you don't have to do this for folks who are listening at home. You don't You don't even need Responder for that, right? Mm-hmm. Actually, if, you, if it's just the first time that you're basically doing any sort of outreach, I highly advise against paying for any tools, including Responder. I would mm. recommend you to start doing it yourself manually. See how it works. Once you get a proof of concept, you're like, okay, this is great. Now let's go ahead and try to replicate and scale. And that's when a tool like Responder comes into play. It's just making your life easier. So do what you do manually about 10 times faster. All right. Gotcha. So hopefully this doesn't come across as me pitching the tool. But what he did, and again, this is something folks can replicate. You go on iTunes, you look up someone in your industry who goes on podcasts a lot. And in our case, I believe it was John, whom we had uh, from local SEO. Yep. And we had found who was a guest on your show. So that automatically tells you three things about that podcast. One, they accept guests. Mm-hmm. Two, they're relevant to your industry because they had someone on their show in your space. And three, right. also makes the life of that average person a lot easier because then we can reference that episode on of the show to imply to the host that, hey, this is not another mass average email we just sent out to everyone. We actually have done our research, found your podcast, and we have the foot in the door, right? Yeah. So having those three, I would say, components help making that average pitch uh, stand out from a lot of the, I'm assuming, the junk emails you get every single day. Right. And right. and also we have metrics that we pull from the podcast that tells us how popular that podcast is. And I believe your podcast is actually in the top 10% podcast globally. So that's awesome. Not sure whether you knew this, but congratulations. I, I'm just busy working. I did not even know that. So that's fantastic. <laughs> but you're fantastic. doing a great job. <laughs> Keep on doing what you're doing. Your podcast is doing amazing. Wonderful. And yeah, absolutely. And so there you go. So that is the podcast strategy, right? It's just building yeah. relationships with people in your space. It's not just spamming, right? And, and right. that's actually our brand motto. It's respond, don't spam, build relationships. So that's one out of the gazillion different average tactics yeah. that we have in that average strategy hub uh, that we've helped folks build backlinks. I love this. And for those of you listening, I hope you caught that strategy because... It, it was right in there where it's looking for people who are in your space. I guess we could call them competitors, but looking for people who are in your space, right? And seeing what other shows they've been on and then pitching yourself to be on those shows too, like brilliant strategy. So I just want to come back to that. If you didn't catch it, that was a really, really good strategy. Now, as far as link building goes, are there good links, bad links? Because I have heard that, like, is it better to have more back? You know, the more obviously you want the more backlinks, the better. But is there a situation where it's just like, you know, is it going to hurt you if the people who are linking to you don't have a good relevancy score with Google? So 
What does that look like as far as right. like getting more and more of these high quality backlinks? Absolutely. So there's a lot of opinion about this, Jennifer. And the reason why there are so many different opinions about this is just because Google in and out of itself is a black box. So they don't actually upright tell you what it is. The opinions that are out there right now are personal opinions of experts in the industry and, and they're all educated guesses. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows exactly how Google prioritizes or weighs different backlinks. Mm -hmm. uh, and what I'm about to tell you is my personal opinion. Mm -hmm. Is it incorrect? There is a possibility, but based on my years and what I've seen working over and over, here's what I have found. So the backlinks themselves, again, I know quite a lot of history. I don't mean to be too nerdy here over the episode here, just so I don't put people asleep, but the backlinks in and out of itself doesn't mean anything because you can always go and purchase a thousand backlinks on Fiverr. So like there's a lot of sellers that have a network of websites and you can just pay them $10 and you get a thousand backlinks tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. So is that going to hurt you necessarily? I don't think so. Is it going to help you? Definitely not. Mm. All right. So let me explain. As a site owner, you don't really have much control over incoming backlinks from external websites. So for Google to penalize a website, uh, wouldn't make much sense because then your competitors can just go build a bunch of junk links to your website and your website would go down. All yeah. Right? So uh, the matter of fact is that you, you would get penalized for these junk links. I don't think that's necessarily a, a good, I would say, assessment. Yeah. What I think is true is the type of links that actually help you up get up in the search results. Those have a lot of strict criteria, and Google has become increasingly smart over the years that uh, they would identify links that have actually been built back to your websites naturally. Mm -hmm. And also they've gotten very good, their AI has gotten very good at figuring out whether those backlinks actually do make sense based on the context of the website, based on the placement on the website. Where is it? Does it make sense? Is it a necessary part of that uh, web page? And there are different ways they put on these websites. Different. There are different tags that define these webs and these backlinks. So, Long story short, what you need to know, right? Put inside all the nerdy stuff. Is that backlinks that are built naturally by mutually beneficial collaborations with relevant authoritative websites in your space are the only kinds of backlinks that are going to help you. Okay. And fortunately or unfortunately, depending on what side of the coin you are, mm -hmm. those there's no easy way of getting them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. It's, supposed to be difficult. But the good thing about it is that once you have them, it's a competitive advantage. It's kind of like having a patent, right? <laughs> so having these backlinks require some time and energy effort put on, but at the same time, it pays off. Mm -hmm. uh, so what that means is that not a single competitor can just go replicate this tomorrow like that, right? Yeah. If you start another presentation software company tomorrow, good luck trying to get two and a half million organic traffic, right? Yeah. Yeah. It just doesn't happen, even if you have a better product. Mm -hmm. So it is a competitive advantage. Now, does it make sense for you as a business to spend time on this? And, and, and it goes back to the original question. There is a mathematical way of looking at this. Mm -hmm. So if you run any sort of business, there's some SEO tools out there. I recommend you to use uh, Ahrefs or SEMrush. And there are two tools that I recommend. If there are free alternatives out there like Uber Suggest by Neil Patel that mm -hmm. uses some metrics. So if you want to play around with that. You can go exactly see the amount of traffic that is estimated that each one of these keywords in your industry are getting. Mm -hmm. And you can calculate a certain conversion rate based on estimated traffic and, and see what the LTV of your customer base is and see if two plus two is four. And mm -hmm. if, if the, there is a clear cut ROI, so there's it's a no brainer for you to start investing in SEO. But if there is not, just, just leave it alone. Don't yeah. touch it. Because just like any other marketing effort, if you do it half baked, mm -hmm. I, I might head out to come up with a more polite version of the word that I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you do it half baked, it's just not going to work. It, it's just going to be a waste of time and resources. So you better invest your time and putting it in places that would make sense for you. That's why I always recommend. There's been more instances where I always recommend people against SEO than I invite them to do that. Mm -hmm. uh, if you run, as I said, a very expensive product that people aren't Googling for, I'm just like, just don't touch it. Yeah. Don't touch SEO. Leave it alone. Go hire salespeople and go sell this product. 
Mm -hmm. uh, but what if you know that your customers are searching for it and you have a clear cut ROI planned out, then it's almost idiotic not to spend time or the energy it requires for it to get up there. Mm -hmm. And there is a clear cut path that you can get there. And I've outlined this, as I said, very briefly during this interview, where you basically build a foundation of your website, write the right type of pieces of content, build the right pieces of uh, landing pages. And then you spend four times the amount of time you spend on creation on promotion tactics to make mm -hmm. sure you have enough backlinks out, uh, from external websites to these web pages. And over time, you can see that traffic starts trickling in. Nice. And so when you're hiring an SEO company, it sounds like really what you're paying for is the off page work, the bat, the link building, if they're writing blog, a blog for you. And I just want to make sure I'm, I'm dialed in for the, those of you who are investing in SEO right now or considering investing in SEO right now, when you're hiring a company to do this for you, I'm, I mean, they're doing the on page stuff to make sure everything on page is lined out. But then it's really the bulk of the work, it sounds like, is really the off-page work. It's the link building work of going out, finding these companies. Would that be a fair statement? That's really ultimately what you're paying for. Well, as I mentioned, it's all pieces of the puzzle, Jennifer. So you can't do one with that. You can't just mm -hmm. go build back this a website that doesn't have a solid content and, and on-page mm -hmm. structure. And you can't just go put a website out and just expect traffic to roll in. So you really have to have all of those together. It doesn't necessarily mean one is um, more work than another. As mm -hmm. I said, I mean, it, it all go, goes sort of hand in hand. Now, when it comes to hiring an SEO, as I mentioned, there's unfortunately so much malpractice that what I would recommend as any business owner is to educate yourself first. Mm -hmm. Understand what your expectations are. Don't just hire a company and trust them they're going to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. um, most likely that's not going to happen because you're just one out of however many clients that they have. And it's just so, it's so easy to come up with charts and graphs to sort of try to confuse the user. And then, you know, you sell them snake oil and, and yeah. it just results in very little conversion. So at the end of the day, what my recommendation is to understand deeply, okay, how does this work exactly? What is our game plan? And, and I outlined sort of this process through the ebook, something that folks can easily replicate in-house even. Uh, so I would recommend even starting this process in-house and get it up to a point where it doesn't, you don't have the manpower to scale. Mm -hmm. And then you hire an agency to scale that one part. I wouldn't just go rely, go to a company and be like, hey, make traffic come to my site. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, that's would that wouldn't be the best way to go about this. What I would recommend is to start studying it yourself, understand how things work, start doing it in-house. When it hits the point that you're like, hey, we don't have the manpower and it would be cheaper to me hire an agency to replicate what I'm doing versus hiring an in-house staff, which most of the time, by the way, it isn't like that. Mm -hmm. That's why we have our own writing team, editorial team. Mm -hmm. At Respana, we have one writer and one average person managing this because we're a very small team. It's a critical hire for us. We hired that person day one. Like we hired an engineer and an average person on the same day, yeah. <laughs> but within the same few weeks from each other. So yeah. because we knew from day one, this is how we're going to get customers. And we, we wanted to plant those seeds and start investing in it. It's not an afterthought for us. So it also depends on the prioritize it, uh, mm -hmm. it for your business. The way I work with any company I've worked with in the past has been doing things entirely in-house. We have worked with agencies, but for smaller pieces. Like, for example, for content creation, we are like, okay, well, we have a content calendar. We have three writers. I can't find any more good writers. Let's hire this agency that already has 20 writers and then give them the topics and the outline. We know exactly what we want, give it to them. And then when we, when they give us the receivables, we can assess whether it's worth the cost or not. And if it doesn't we'll go with another agency. So agencies for us is never a um, done for you service. It's something that we just get help from as needed. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. This has been so wonderfully informative. I really, really appreciate just everything that you shared. I could sit here and like talk to you for another hour <laughs> and just like pick your brain around all this stuff. And I know everybody listening is getting so much value from this as well. So I just really appreciate you sharing these different strategies and how to go about it. And and honestly, I just really appreciate you being respectful of a business owner's money. Because so many people are just like, you know, throw money at it, throw money at it. And 
that's not always the best way to do it. And the fact that you've got so many great, you know, we'll call it organic strategies that you can do on your own to get found on Google, because it's not easy to get found on Google if you're not doing these things correctly, is just so, so helpful. Okay, so I'd love to ask one more final question. So if you could just, anything that we didn't already talk about in the interview today, any final last thoughts you'd like to share with our listeners in regards to their SEO strategy? Absolutely. I would leave you with a very quick breakdown, a two-minute summary of what I spoke during the interview. Mm -hmm. Folks who are listening and they're like, oh my God, there is so much uh, information. I don't know what to do with it. It's very simple. Any SEO strategy has two parts, on-page side of things and off-page side, okay? On-page side starts with keyword research. You can drop a parent keyword, for example. Respana, our parent keyword is link building. You can drop it through our SEO tool. It gives you a gazillion search suggestions. And like, here is what all the people are searching about this over the internet. Then you want to prioritize those based on how valuable that keyword is to your business. And we have a formula for prioritization uh, that is prioritizing keywords that have the highest amount of clicks, highest amount of volume, lowest amount of competition, mm -hmm. and highest commercial intent. Mm. We used to call it the Farzad score. And, and my team was like, that's too tacky. We're going to call this the opportunity score. And I was okay. Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I like the first name. I do. <laughs> yes, I know, right? The Farzad score. Let's, right. let's keep it going. I... <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and, and, and you prioritize. So you assign a score to each one of these keywords through a very simple formula. Again, I talk about these step by step there in the ebook that I mentioned, Bizme Marketing Strategy. Mm -hmm. And then once you have a set of prioritize keywords and based on however much resources that you have. If you're a one-man show, then pick 10. If you're mm -hmm. a 10-man show, pick 100, right, of these keywords. And then you go understand what the user intended for each one of these. And how do you understand what the user intent is? Such a fancy big word. You just Google it. <laughs> just open a little incognito tab yeah. on your browser so that your previous search history doesn't impact it and just Google it. And yeah. Google literally through the search results is telling you, for example, if somebody's asking what is link building, it's an informational keyword. They're probably looking for a blog post that's explaining exactly right. what link building is. But if somebody's looking for link building software, they're probably not wanting to sit down and read about link building software. They just want to go and sign up or try something out. So right. in the user journey, they're at the bottom of the phone. So understand the user intent and accordingly create a content type. So if it's a blog post, create a content. Piece. If it's a landing page, create a page. If it's a template page, like link building outreach, uh, it's mm -hmm. probably going to be a bunch of email templates. Mm -hmm. Go create that, that users want. And then once you have that, then we get to the on page side of things. So using a variety of different link outreach strategies, you want to start reaching out to relevant publications in your space, building a mutually beneficial collaboration with them mm -hmm. in order to incentivize them to mention that particular piece, whatever that may be, if it's a landing page or blog post in their website. Mm -hmm. And how much time do you spend on it? Four times the amount of time it took to create to that. To write piece. it, to create it. Rinse and repeat, that's it. I love it. It's so good because you hear so often, you know, content is king, Bill Gates, which is still a great quote, but you know, it's just like content, content, create it, create it, create it. And uh, it's exhausting to me. I long years ago just decided I can't keep up with this. It's going to be quality over quantity. And that's what we coach our clients on as well. And so I just love that you're validating that of just guys, it's not about just constantly cranking out content, spend four times the amount of time you took to create the content on promoting it and getting those backlinks and those collaborations and relationships with other uh, people in your space. I just love that strategy. Awesome. Okay. Perfect. Very nice. Thank you so much for everything you've shared with us today. Okay, so just tell everybody where they can find you. Your software sounds amazing. I'm going to go check it out just as soon as we're <laughs> off. I'm Right now, I'm going to go like, oh man, I got to check this software out because it's not, I'm a software person. I had two software companies. I use a lot of technology in my practice. And so I'm like, I got to go check this out. So tell everybody where they can find you and your software and your company. Absolutely. So the software, our product's name is Respana, R-E-S-P-O-N-A. You can either Google it or go to respana.com. I wouldn't recommend you to go straight up and sign up. There's a lot of free educational material we put on our website, on our blog, and on the outreach strategy hub. I recommend you to 
you know, go through a couple. Mm-hmm. We always give a lot of examples. Be very crystal clear in terms of whether or not this is something that could help. And to be transparent with you, most people probably wouldn't need our software yet. You can mm-hmm. just start replicating a lot of the strategies that we put out there for free yourself manually. Get a proof of concept, see how things are going. It is time consuming and it's mm-hmm. not scalable. It's inefficient. Hence why we exist. Yes. <laughs> but <laughs> but once it hits a point, you're like, hey, you know, I would pay $99 to save 10 hours a day. Uh, mm-hmm. And, and it's, it becomes a no brainer at that point to start with Respond. And then Respond, we, uh, we offer our onboarding session. So anybody who starts, uh, we basically set them up with our customer success team and we set up a free four to five minute session where we sit down with you and kind of strategize and help them get started. And we also offer a 30 day guarantee because we're not the right fit for a lot of businesses. So if, so if you, somebody comes in, signs up, it's 99 bucks a month, built month to month, and it's not the right fit for them after one month of using it, they just get a full refund. And that's pretty much it. But as I say, I implore people, don't just go straight up, sign up for yeah. Respana. Do some education and read some educational content first. And if that's something I could help, we'd love to have you in our community. Also, my name is Farzad Rashidi. There's not a whole lot of them out in the world. So I stick out like a sore thumb on LinkedIn. So feel free to say, and I'll stop by and say hi and connect. Um, I'd love to hear from you. Wonderful. Farzad, thank you so much for being here with us today. I really appreciate it. I love all the strategies. I know our listeners appreciate it too. And, and that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, you guys go out there. Thank you for being here and have a happy, productive day. Bye. I hope you found today's episode of the Happy Productive Podcast inspiring. Every successful business is formed by a set of small, consistent, and attainable steps. Visit us at jenniferdawncoaching.com to take your next step and learn how to meet your business goals. On the website, you'll find free resources along with the links to the life-changing coaching programs that have transformed the personal lives of so many of Jennifer's clients. Many of them started their journey by listening to this podcast. Thank you for listening and stay tuned for our next episode. This is the She Leads Podcast Network.